how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Yes. Um, thank you so much for accepting to be part of this. Anything that has God in it, mm. because my journey has been God and yes. God of through, so I cannot play any song that doesn't have Him yeah, in it. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Any, anything, any song <laughs> that has God, yes, that's for sure. Okay, yeah, for sure, I'll do that. Okay. Okay, so my name is Lydia Avenaitwe. I work with Light for the World as a program officer for inclusive employment. Uh, my journey has been long and filled with uh, both good and bad experiences. So in order not to bore you, I will balance them. <laughs> yeah, so um, I was born with a, a disability or I have lived with a disability all my life. And it has brought both uh, bad and good experiences, mm. but mostly it's been bad experiences of discrimination, of, um, of, of stigma, of, of belittlement. But amid it all, yeah, like I said initially from the start, it's been God holding my hand all through, through yeah. them uh, to a point where I've had an education, I have had influence over other young people with disabilities. My work has reso resonated, my, yeah, I've used my experiences to empower other people, to encourage them to soldier on. So, um, yeah, what particular experiences can I speak about? So when you are growing up as a young person with a disability, you have dreams, you have aspirations, and you're thinking, just like everyone else, you're going to achieve them. Mm. But along the way, what stood out for me was when my journey for employment started. Mm -hmm. And then you would find human resource managers that would ask you questions like, what can you do for us? Yet they've already shortlisted you for interviews. So those kinds of experiences uh, crushed me for uh, 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 at some point that I would not, uh, I would take breaks okay. to apply for jobs until I would get over the last experience oh. to start looking for a job again. Yeah. Yeah. So, but here we are. Light for, for the, the world, world is a global disability and development organization. Mm -hmm. And we, our headquarters are in Vienna, Austria. We have uh, uh, operations in eight countries yeah. in Africa. Okay. But I'm going to speak particularly about the Uganda office, mm -hmm. which I joined in 2018 mm -hmm. um, as a disability inclusion officer by then. Yeah. So ma m many of our activities are centered about economic empowerment for mm -hmm. uh, youth with disabilities. We all know without money, life is not a dignified mm. so uh, we promote uh, entrepreneurship for people with disabilities the previous programs have centered about um, uh, enterprise development for mm. people with disabilities where they would come in groups and then uh, do activities that would get them money mm. uh, but particularly me I've centered my uh, my role has been around inclusive employment and it has like three sections. Okay. One is preparing the youth with disabilities to compete for all these opportunities that yeah. are there in the labor market, to get rid of uh, low self-esteem, mm. to know where to get all these uh, 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 opportunities from. And on the other side, I link them to employers. Okay. But employers cannot give these people uh, opportunities if they do not understand who they are, mm. if they do not understand how to do it. So uh, I coordinate uh, efforts that um, are geared towards uh, making employers aware of the needs of people with disabilities and also making sure that their workplaces are disability inclusive so that when these people go there they are able to compete yeah. favorably. favorably and then in the middle we also have the skilling bit where you find uh, youth with disabilities they need jobs but then they do not have the skills yeah. to compete for these opportunities so we link them also to some of the employers that offer such services for example, in ICT, we have Campabits that uh, trains in ICT, so they decided to also in their intakes to take on people with disabilities for such trainings, outbox also. Yeah. 
Uh, then we have for vocational training institutes that we work with that are also have been open to including people with disabilities okay. in those programs. So Light for the World Uganda is basically about getting people with disabilities to become economically independent so that they can also live happy and dignified lives. Okay. okay. Uh, as, a, as an influencer of others, influencing others mm. to become uh, inclusive mm. that is also a plus mm -hmm. on my side because uh, using my personal experiences to influence the youth to know that I'm not where I want to be yes. in, in all aspects of life but at least I'm not where I used to be where most people with disabilities still are yes. so uh, when they look at me as an example of what it means to make it in, in the labor market to make it in in life generally mm. even yes. though I still have gaps that I need to feel as an individual that is also good yeah. because they will also feel they can they can do it they mm. can do it but then also going out there to influence other companies and organizations to embrace the potentials of people with disabilities, it makes me really happy. Yeah. But one thing I know for sure, a person, a woman with a disability, the needs and aspirations of a woman with a disability are totally different from that mm. of a man with a disability. disability. Yes, so um, all the other aspects that women have to deal with, and then you top it up and that add disability. disability, it becomes, I would say, a double jeopardy. No. Yes, a double jeopardy, especially mm. for women with disabilities. Mm. But the ground is leveled now. It's, it's not as it used to be before, where uh, people with disabilities were looked at as women with disabilities were looked at as a burden, mm. uh, uh, beggars. But now you find they have jobs, they are married into loving families, mm. they are raising children on their own. But then again, you look on the other spectrum. Uh, most women with disabilities are abused, sexually abused by men because of the vulnerabilities that their disabilities represent, but also because of the economic disempowerment. Men take advantage of them and instead leave them with a burden that they cannot bear on their own children. They, they are rendered into single mothers that cannot fend for their children. <laughs> At all. Funny as well. Let me first think. <laughs> what could that be? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I, I I remember. It's it's both. It's both uh, heartwarming, but it depends on who is listening mm. to it. So uh, one time I go to um, um, what is this place? Lugogo Shopping Center, mm. and there is um, there are several parking slots. Yes. Several. But there are only two parking slots for people with disabilities, reserved and marked. Mm -hmm. And they are between, uh, one is in front of the customer care service center for MTN, and another one is um, a bit in front of where, um, what is this thing that closed? I don't game? Know. Yes, game. The two, just mm -hmm. two in that whole space. So I reached there. Uh, but before I parked, I saw someone with a really huge car mm. come and take on one of the slots. Mm. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's a person with a disability or yes. something. But the gentleman just emerged out of there and okay. he didn't have a disability. Yeah. And I'm thinking, mm -mm -mm, mm. this is abuse, I yeah. can't have it. So I drove and I came next to where he had parked and I tell the security guard, you know what, you need to remove this. Mm. You need to have this guy. He had walked off. Yes. You need to have this guy because this is reserved parking. Mm. There is a particular reason as to why these parking slots are there. But as I'm doing that, I'm cutting off traffic. Mm. Everyone, all cars are like, there is traffic. Mm. It, and, and some are shouting, uh, uh, you get off, you mm. can go and, and use. Uh, other parking slots that are empty. Of course, that came from a point of ignorance. Mm. These guys didn't know what they were talking about. But there were those very nice people mm. who understood what the cause was 
and they encouraged me in my stance mm. to stay there until the issue was resolved. resolved. So it was both light, you know, yeah. like holding everyone to just make a point. Yes. And then there was also the, the bitter uh, lace around it of mm. people judging that you're difficult when you're trying to uh, push for what you think yeah. belongs to you. So. Yeah, uh, it Potato depends on who is listening. 50, 50. Yes, <laughs> it's listening to it. Yeah, um, everyone goes through challenges, mm. whether you're a person with a disability or not. Yeah, everyone experiences challenges, but how you approach them is what makes the difference. Mm. Uh, so I, I acknowledge that the challenges of women with disabilities are unique. But again, the choices that you make to resolve those challenges will determine if your situation will be better or it will be worse. So uh, my, my point of emphasis is be careful the mm. choices that you make in addressing those challenges. But then also, there has been an outpouring of opportunities for people with disabilities mm. lately. The visibility of disability has become too much you're here, mm. you're interviewing me mm. about uh, disability and the challenges that I've had. That's not what used to happen before mm. as people with disabilities were shunned. Mm. But now it has, uh, if you, you see uh, jobs that have an affirmative action statement, women with disabilities are encouraged to apply, people with disabilities are encouraged to apply. To apply. There are corporate companies that are pushing for the diversity agenda so much mm. that they want to uh, add people with disabilities among their staff. So there are so many mm. opportunities that are open for people yeah. with disabilities. But like uh, a common adage that opportunities are for those who are ready mm. to take them. So uh, women with disabilities need to come out and ready themselves to take on these opportunities because at the end of the day, disability is not a qualification yeah. for these opportunities. One has to upskill, mm. one has to uh, work on their social uh, skills and network more often. Uh, this idea of uh, isolation and them hiding themselves where they are, opportunities are not going to find them in bed. Mm. So there is a need to come out, to join groups and and yes, and embrace all these opportunities available. Yeah. Acceptance is a wonderful thing. Mm. Uh, every human being wants to be accepted for who they are. Mm. Because I cannot change my disability. This is who I am, this is who I have been. So looking at me as an individual and accepting me as an individual, it will dictate how you're going to treat me. Either you're going to, if you do not value me as a person and focus more on my disability, that's exactly how you're going to treat me as worthless. So um, this acceptance can be demonstrated in so many ways. One, like you said, in speech. How do you look at me? How do you address me? Personally, I hate being called a disabled woman. Mm. Before, before my disability, there are other good things that you can you can say about me. It doesn't have to start with mm. my disability. You can you can you can say she's a smart lady mm. with a disability. So okay. don't call me a disabled woman. For me, when someone says this is a disabled woman, I say someone who is like saying I'm dead mm. because anything that is disabled is non-functioning. I have other abilities. So that's one of those things. Change the way you perceive us, change the way you address us. We've had local dialects or always calling people who, are, uh, who have hearing impairments, calling them kasiru. Mm. That's stupid, a stupid person. So if you think, I'm, if you address me as kasiru, that is how you're going to treat me yeah. also. So respectful language promotes our dignity and it also promotes the way other people will, will address yes. us. So let's be very um, positive mm. in the way we address people with disabilities. And we are living in an era of social media. Mm. I have seen there was a show that was showing on TV and it was translated. Mm. And there was um, one of the act actresses is a person of short stature. Mm. But the person who was translating the movie said, Kabinika huyo. 
don't know referring to a person of short stature and many times I see uh, um, like on social media like someone who, who has a disability has married someone without a disability so instead of people congratulating them you hear someone saying oh, this one must be having money or else why would a man want to be with such a woman so we are human beings mm -hmm. if if uh, if you Winnie can aspire to love and be loved so do I mm -hmm. Uh, apart from a disability I have, my, all my other senses are functioning. Mm. So these kinds of, even social media influencers, there was a time I took on uh, one of uh, the people, uh, social media influencers, uh, who put a clip that he went out on a date, uh, a blind date, and then sat there with a lady, and then when he said, let's go to the car, the lady gets up and she has crutches, and the guy said, Ugh. Yeah, a social media influencer. So if you are a social media influencer and you're making fun of uh, people with disabilities, that's what you are influencing yes. your followers to do, yes. to disrespect them. So we live in a society that has a lot of freedom of expression, but the, that freedom of expression is causing more harm than good. Mm. So uh, all these um, media houses, all these uh, um, social media influencers need to be deliberate, the kind of content that they put out that is not disrespectful of who we are as people with disabilities. Um, mm -hmm. What's your looking profile picture, serious or smile? Smile. Oh, nice. Smile <laughs> okay. What would you rather go for, a uh, natural glow or bold makeup? Natural glow. Mm. Uh, I believe sometimes makeup is superficial. Mm. When I take it off, I am not who I think I am. So <laughs> I would rather go natural. Yes. Okay. Books or movies? Both. Okay. It depends yes. on what it is. If it's a good Christian book, okay. wonderful. Okay. If it's a nice Christian movie, Absolutely. Yeah. If it's uh, something that, uh, that will teach me uh, how to promote my work mm. in disability inclusion, yay! Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's it. Okay. Thank you so much, Lydia. Thank you yeah. as well.